previously on St. Elsewhere. How are the memoirs? Going great. I found you a steno. Meet John Doe. Have you seen John Doe? That nitwit stole 333 of the best pages of my life. I want to come back. I've just received word from the UMass College. You can get through there and into the Northeastern PA program in just two years. Community service assignment, Dr. Morrison. You start today at the Newcastle Penitentiary. I'm sorry, what? You all right? Yes, sir. Good. Well, if you're through contemplating the mysteries of the universe, would you mind presenting the next case? Next case? Mr. Ansari. Ah, uh, white male, 45, global aphasia. Uh, no, seems like old times with Boomer. I think he's got problems. I've been spending all day doing litmus tests on people's urine. Oh, really? Business or pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been tapped by the mucky mucks to supervise a kidney tapping. Oh, yeah, looking for drugs. In all the wrong places. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you can handle it, Victor. Just treat the staff with sensitivity. Don't jerk them around. <laughs> Mark, your breakfast getting cold. Coming. Yes. I'm waiting for Officer Down. He's to meet me at my office at St. Allegis. Ten o'clock. My book was stolen. What do you mean, buy another one? What's your name, Flatfoot? Hello? Hello? So happy I am to cook for you. My Russian holiday breakfast. Oh, it smells delicious. Satiba. Who is she? Russia, our new housekeeper. I told you yesterday. What happened to Natasha? Moved to Frostbite Falls. Got a job with the Minnesota Symphony. Oh, boy, Ellen. Emma Lazarus didn't welcome as many immigrants as we do. What are you doing? Good for Barbara. Make her big and strong. Not on your life. Barbara is strictly a Gerber baby. A little potato won't hurt. She'll grow up looking like one of those lady discus throwers with an extra chromosome. I get you fresh coffee. Just because John Doe stole your book doesn't mean that you can take it out on the rest of us. Give me one good reason why not. Until that manuscript is returned, I'm not sleeping easy. And neither are you. Well, at least try to be nicer to Marsha than you were to Natasha. Say that five times fast. Craig family, beautiful. Yuri and I used to have breakfast, fight over little things. I miss him so much. What did he do? Sweep the steps of Lennon's tomb? Surgeon, like you. Hardly. Barbara, don't play with your herring. 
Very famous. Why won't they let him emigrate? To punish us. Oh, if only Yuri was here with me. Yes, well, I'd like to stay and listen to the Soviet sob story, but I've got to get to the hospital and meet Officer Down. But tomorrow I'll be here all day to help get this house back in order. Don't forget, Mark, I'm having Joanne Morrison to lunch tomorrow. In that case, I'll go to the movies. Why did you invite her anyway? Well, you know, welcome wagon. Well, I hope she talks faster than her husband, or she'll still be here for dinner. Farina for you, young lady. So you condone drug abuse? See, that's not what I'm saying. Well, then why are you against the testing? Look, I haven't committed any crime. Mandatory drug testing is like... is like frisking everybody in the supermarket because some of them might be shoplifters. Six percent of all nurses in this country are drug addicts. When are they testing us? Tomorrow afternoon. Orderlies today, doctors next week. You know, if they're really serious about catching abusers, why did they announce this farce in advance? Addicts are self-destructive. They're not going to stop using drugs just because they know there's a test coming up. You don't kick a habit without help. I think the drug testing is a good idea. You're in favor. Yeah, sure. Excuse me, I have to run to the ladies' room, little honeymoon cystitis. Drinking cranberry juice? Gallons? Lay off the coffee. No kidding. Now there's a truly dangerous drug, caffeine. Let me tell you something, Lucy. If I was still head nurse, I wouldn't put my girls through this. Well, you're not head nurse. I am, and you don't have a choice. Yes, I do. I won't take the test. You'll be suspended. They wouldn't do that to me. Don't bet your job on it, Helen. I understand that patients have to feel that the people taking care of them are trustworthy. I know that. But you drug testing will also lower our insurance premiums, which have skyrocketed. Officer Down from Area D stopped by. Testing is the board's idea. No, I just don't think it's right kowtowing to an insurance company. I told him to call out the rest of the alphabet and get back to me. Drug screening makes both ethical and fiscal sense. A rare combination. Hmm. Uh, here we are. At the scene of the crime. Officer Down found a page of my book at the bus depot. Any idea of the whereabouts of John Doe? Not yet. But these gumshoes say that justice is just around the corner. Back to work. See you. Dr. Ashland. Luther. Who died? Nobody yet, because I'm on the job. Why the time? Oh, it makes me feel more professional and people respect me more. Oh, I checked on your patient's syndication. You asked me to take a history, find out about an angina. How many episodes? 100. A marathoner. With luck, she'll run forever. What would you like me to do next? This isn't strictly medical, but it would be a worthwhile endeavor if you were to orchestrate a show for the tots in pediatrics. Well, I'm no Paul Schaefer, but I'll see what I can do. Who's Paul Schaefer? I'm really depressed about this past weekend. I was hoping to get up to Burlington. Got a little Vermont maid hidden away, Ellen? No, my second cousin, Reese, was there. He used to sell firewood, but now he's back working for his parents. Guess he couldn't cut the cord. Oh. Now, what were you going to do up there? I going to see the leaves. The foliage hotline said the color is peaky. Don't say the color is peaky. It leaves an acidic taste in my mouth. Where is everybody? It's 32 or 4, right? Yeah. Must be early. Um, you probably want to be leaving, kid, because we're going to have a medical lecture in here. I know. There's a height requirement. Look at Sonny. Everyone in this room yawning is a doctor, an adult, so, you know, take a hike. Ladies and gentlemen, settle in, please. We've got a lot to cover today before we head off rounds. An announcement before we begin. Please welcome our new medical student, Orrin Drimmer.
Hej. This is a pain in the drain. Drain into this. <laughs> no, leave the door open. What are you into watching? I just want to make sure what you give me is yours, all yours, and nothing but yours. Who else's? They'll try and slip anything by. Beer, apple juice, ginger ale. They just add water and serve. <laughs> try and bring in their neighbor's urine. One guy gave me his sister's. I showed he was pregnant. So, go ahead. I can't do this when somebody's watching. Not even when somebody's in the next room. I always run the faucet. Think fluid. Think Niagara Falls, Walden Pond, Veronica Lake, Joan Rivers. Okay, 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 I get the picture. I'm flowing. Make sure it's warm. Better be warm or I'm in trouble. Steaming. Proves this is your very own bodily fluid. He's going to seal the container with evidence tape, initial the tape, put the sealed container in this envelope, initial it. It's called the chain of custody. Somebody will pick this up, sign, zoom it over the lab, they'll sign. We want to know where your urine is and who's got it at all times. Oh, this is one thing I like to do right before your very eyes. What does that prove? Proves you gave me urine and not rolling rock. If I could whiz B, I'd be in the brewery business. Mrs. Bushnell and Mr. Trigram. That hurts, young man. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give me xylocaine first? It causes swelling. It makes your artery harder to find. Boy, I wish there was a machine that would make you feel what I feel. You'd be more careful. Where did you go to medical school, Grenada? Sorry that pinched. Sorry's all I ever hear. Let me tell you, young man. Sorry don't make it. You're right. And George's chaperoning Owen. Yeah. Is it going right for babysitters these days, too? Two fifty? Why me? Why is it always me? You know, they take advantage of my good nature around here. Hey, Owen. So fourteen in pre med, huh? You must have skipped a couple. High school. What, homecoming, senior prom, the whole enchilada? Yeah, well, after I finished Einstein's unified field theory. How old were you? Twelve. Well, I went straight to junior college, and then uh, BU pre-med. That wasn't a big deal. This is a big deal. It's St. Regis. Yeah, are you kidding? Working with real doctors, hands-on medicine, helping people, and I get to wear this neat white coat. Are we ready for rounds? First case, Henry Stevens. Should we consider pulmonary embolus? Anyone? There was no pleuritic component to his chest pain. But is it always present in cases of pulmonary embolus? Well, where there's dyspnea, chest pain, and tachycardia, I suggest we do a pulmonary angio to be sure. Elliot, excellent. Next case, Liza Baum. Seth, any changes in a liver function test? You've got to learn to stay on your feet. Just like that if you want to make it in this hospital. I know. Course of treatment. Owen, 
Well, if the patient continues experiencing abdominal pain, then an ultrasound should be done to check for dilation of the common bile duct or evidence of stones. Very good. Hi, Eliza. It's Lisa with an S. Hmm. Another unveiling. I'm sorry. I know this is tiresome for you. Please, put out your cigarette. Every day, beginning to feel like Gypsy Rose, Lisa. Brushed. I see you passed Anatomy 101. Seth, would you do the honors? Sure. Definite distended gallbladder. Owen, do you think an ERCP would be advisable at this time? Why is he staring at me? And what's a 13-year-old boy doing in my room anyway? I can assure you, he's totally qualified. I'm a medical student, and I'm 14. Well, how about I loan you 350 and you go hyperventilate over a Playboy? <laughs> Everyone, please, despite Owen's age difference, we will treat one another with respect and as peers and colleagues. Owen? Would you present the next case, please? Boomer, how's married life treating you, huh? Still in phase one bliss? Yeah, it's fine, it's great. So you're a hallucinate? And that's since college. I saw something today I couldn't have seen. What, Peter White? No, not quite. Nick Moat. Ah, doesn't ring a bell. Newcastle Prison, the convict. You know, sometimes I think I see somebody I know. Maybe my brother. I go up to them and they're total strangers. It's embarrassing. No, I didn't see somebody that looked like Moats. I hallucinated the whole thing. There was nobody there at all. Hey, listen. You got a new family. You're a stepfather. It's a lot of adjustment. Oh, Joanna, the kids are the best part of my life. I go home, I feel real grounded. No, I'm just a little stressed out now. Overworked. Well, I think you're doing a great job of putting the pieces back together for me. Out of run. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Nick Moats. Your chart indicates that you're due for another 50 milligrams. 30 minutes ago. The last one's wearing off fast. I'm in a world of hurt. All right. I'll tell the nurses you're up next. Oh, thank you. You're so much more gentle than that tall, curly-haired resident was. Doctor who? Oh, Morris, Morris, and I can never remember which. All right. Well, we just don't want to get you used to those painkillers. We don't want to send you home with a habit, all right? I'll see you later. Hi. She's complaining. She's very uncomfortable. Well, McPhail's been administering her meds, so I'll have her do the next round when she comes back from break late again. Well, I just think we should help this lady deal with her pain. You know, I don't want her building up a tolerance to these drugs. Oh, I get you she's a whiner. Mm -hmm. Say she's a little hypersensitive. Maybe I don't understand that that dosage should be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Do you have a minute? I want to ask you something about the drug testing. Can you wait? And that's Daniel's territory anyway. Sorry. Kids are all down. At last. Christopher asked me about Caitlin's period. What did you tell him? I told him to ask his mother. Sixth grade health class. They put the boys in a room by themselves, and this old German guy comes in, and he shows us slides about menstruation. <laughs> Oh, very abstract. 
I didn't understand the word. What should I wear to Mrs. Craig's? Uh, a dress. Which one? I don't care. Sleepy? Yeah, I'm beat. Do you? No. Just how tired are you? Joanne. It's been a long day. I can't see what else is now. Jack, do you know how many times we made love last month? I don't count. Well, I do. Twice. And even then, you were somewhere else. I'm not tired. I'm not sleeping. You stay awake all night, staring at the ceiling so hard I can hear you. What's the matter? Nothing. It is work all right? Yes. Work is fine. Life is great. Are you worried that I'm going to embarrass you at the crazy? Oh, don't be stupid. Why are you putting more pressure on me, Joanne? It's the last thing I need. Practicing prestidigitation. Looks like magic to me. In my manual dexterity, I've gotten quite proficient. Watch this. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's great. I can do a trick. Really? Just this morning, I walked around the corner and turned into a mini mark. <laughs> Empty the trash and beat it. You know I'm organizing a show in pediatrics today. Good for you. Kids would love your magic. Not a chance. I'd be pelted with gummy bears. Don't say no till you think about it. Tonight, 7.30? I won't be there. Won't start without you. Tonight. Hey. What time? 7.30. You won't regret this. I regret everything. So if there's a shrinking of the surface and edges of the tongue, it indicates pernicious anemia. The bright red patches indicate... Uh, Owen, please. Enough shop talk, okay? Okay. Where to now? On call. What for? 40 winks. I'm not tired. Well, I am. I've been up for 36 hours. Yeah. Oh, hey, watch it. Sorry. I've just never seen a case of bursitis before. I mean, her tongue was all swollen. It won't be your last. What's the drug of choice for treatment? What are you asking me for? You already know the answer. I have a photographic memory. Yeah, for memories. Call a code. What's the code? Stop this thing and call a code. Call a code. Who are you? Call a code, please. Listen, you little squirt. I don't know what you're up to or where you scored that ID tag. Lucy, code blue, Scott! Code blue. Here, you take over compressions, I'll breathe them. You do know CPR, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, then come down here and give me a hand. Now, you little worm, now! Come on, Owen, like you really need it. You're trying to save this guy's life. Come on, hook him up. Fill in with the handy bag. One for every five progression. 
Cheese. Give me two amps, five carb, get some Epi ready, and start a lidocaine drip. Come on, people, let's move. We're losing them. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know what to do. comment for you. Thanks. Mark and I are both coffee drinkers, but once in a while he'll have a cup of chamomile just to settle his stomach. Speaking of health food, have a designer cookie. Wow. Well, I... Now come on. They're too good. <laughs> They're Italian. Well, I'll twist my arm. Why is your um, yard all torn up? Oh, the gardener is resodding the back. He's putting in some kind of a plot device. Now, how does the life of a doctor's wife suit you? These are too delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Jack warned me, but I didn't realize how tough the schedule would be. Did you ever get used to the hours? No. When I was pregnant with Stephen, Mark was a resident. I didn't see him for days on end. Sometimes when Jack gets home, he is so wound up. Mark, too. Especially if an operation doesn't go his way. Jack just withdraws. Lately, he has been so remote. He seems to be coping very well. After all, it isn't that long. He swears he's over Nina's death, and... No, I didn't I mean think... Nina. I mean, what happened to him in prison. Jack was in prison? Spacey, self-doubting, he's inefficient. Who are we talking about? Boomer. Hi. Hi. Who's Boomer? Jack Morrison. Why do you call him Boomer? I don't remember. Something to do about a dog? He's getting fragged in the matrimonial trenches. Take it from a veteran of the conjugal campaigns. Right. You were married all of a month. Sixteen days. I learned. How many times you got to put your finger in the socket before you figure out the current is hot? Well, there's something definitely wrong with him. He started dropping the baton again. He's not even in the race. It's been six months since the race. He raped somebody? Uh-uh. All the way around. He received. That's just a rumor. Don't kid yourself. Gossip. Nobody knows for sure. Where? Newcastle Penitentiary. Has anybody bothered to ask him what really happened? Oh, yeah, sure. Jack, excuse me, is it true that a couple of those big burly convicts had their way with you? Victor! Jackie! He's coming apart at the seams. He told me he thought he saw the con who did the dirty deed. Oh, shoot, here comes Dr. Westfall. I've been avoiding him. Dr. Westfall! Dr. Griffin, I'd like to see you in my office this afternoon. A couple of things we have to sort out. Right now, I'd rather be in Boomer's shoes. Hello, is that a new hairdo? Absolutely not. Looks different to me every week. And Daniel, I've got something to say. My drug screening is this afternoon. I'm not taking the test. Why? Why should I? Well, Helen, the hospital needs testing. There have been several incidents citywide involving orderlies and nurses. And doctors. Accidents caused by chemical intoxication. You'd be naive to suppose otherwise. Are you calling me childish? Oh, of course not. I'm for testing. If there's evidence of abuse, but to help, not to punish. What you're doing is terrifying everybody. The hospital's collective BP is way up. The common good of St. Eligius outweighs the right of the individual. If you don't take the test, we'll suspend you. Would you really do that to me, Daniel? What choice would I have? None. Suspend me.
Here he comes. Faster, faster, faster. Ah, emergency vehicle. Clear. Oh, 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 you know what? Oh, no, you hurt the emergency vehicle. Oh, no. Hello. Hi. How, how was your day? Ah, uh, what the same. I saw Ellen Craig today. Oh, yeah. How's your lunch? Where's Chris and Caitlin? In their rooms. We still going to Sal's for pizza? Yeah. I, I need some time alone with you before dinner. Jack, Jack, we need to talk. Okay, talk. What's the matter? Is Pete been a bad egg? No, Pete's an angel. Good. Jack, Ellen told me that... You know, I, I, I really don't know how to say this. Sounds serious. Yeah. Ellen told me that you were... Caitlin, please, I asked you to stay in your room. Hi, Jack. How's it going, kiddo? It's okay. Yeah? How was school? School's okay. What'd you do today? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Except Mom's been acting really weird. Well, we're having a little discussion. Maybe you ought to, uh... Okay, but I'm starving. All right. <clears throat> we'll be in in the jiffy. Okay, great, because I want that thick crust with the extra sausage. Gotcha. What's up? Were you in prison? No. Outreach program, community service, worked in the prison clinic. Oh. Well, I, I, I got so worried because uh, all of a sudden she dropped the subject. Well, it's nothing to concern you. Caitlin, Chris, it's time for pizza. Yeah, but she, she looks so uncomfortable. I, I mean, why did she drop the subject, Jack? Maybe she was embarrassed. I get into a fight, a little beat up, that's all. Okay? okay. Nothing happened. Okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. Watch this one. What do you say? Size seven and three eighths. Okay. Nothing in my sleeves. Nothing in my hat. Uh, let me try it again. I'm thinking of buying a car. I've got to get this down before I entertain the kiddies. One of those tea birds with the cute little pothole. Yeah, well, you'll have to dig into your pension plan to pay for that. I shouldn't think so. That car's a classic. Too soon to tell, but they are rather nice. Hello? Yes. They're waiting for you in pediatrics. Wait a minute. I'm ready. Here. Okay. Nothing up my sleeves. Gotta get a new hat. Whose cardiac the magnificent? You, who else? Huh. Oh, For the love of Mike, Helen, can't you see him about to make an entrance? Hey, sorry, but the police are here. They found John Doe. I'll be right back. At last, the long arm of the law. There you are, Doe. Where's my novel? That isn't John Doe, damn it. You know, it's a sad day in Boston when an upstanding citizen gets short shrift from the boys in blue. It's showtime. The show's over.
Where have you been for the last two hours? Studying. Well, I've been with your friend from the elevator. You can visit him anytime you're ready. Really? Sure. In the morgue. Thanks for leaving me holding the ammo bag. Come on, come on, cut it out. I, I didn't know what to do. There was no help at all. Yeah. Oh, and the guy was probably dead before he hit the floor. I didn't help him. So what? But his body went cold. <coughs> You know, Owen, when I was 10 years old, my best friend's father died. It was an open casket. I had never seen a dead person before. Mr. Boucher lying there, kind of yellow and puffy. I went towards him and I closed my eyes. I'm walking on autopilot. Probably knelt there no longer than 10 seconds. But I'll never forget that smell. Formaldehyde and bay rum. I went home and barfed. But you're used to death now. No, it still scares me. It does it. I'm leaving St. Louis. What are you talking about? You're supposed to feel better. I just spilled my guts to you. Hands on is just not where I belong. Tell me my innermost thoughts and fears. I'm going back to the university. I'm going to get my PhD in genetic research. In my very soul. I mean, I bared my second for the entire world to see. Shut up, Elliot. Okay. If my intelligence is also my curse. You know, if you ask me, you should go build a treehouse somewhere. Or take some time off. Act like a normal kid. I'm not normal. Yes, you are. My IQ is 162. Okay, so you're not. Guess I better talk to Dr. Kim. Hey, Elliot. We're going across to the park for some two-hand touch. Little pass, punt, kick. Roll around the leaves. Want to come? Sure. Hey, Owen, you want to join us? I'm not that good at sports. Oh, that's okay. I'll teach you. Not that bad. Boy, am I stinging too. Mm, sure am I. No, no, I just got a goodbye hug from Helen Rosenthal. Uh -huh. <clears throat> that woman's worked here how long? 20-some-odd years? Now, what the hell's going on in this place? Mandatory testing means exactly what it implies. Yeah. Well, I knew it was a bad idea. Ah, oh, Helen's being stubborn for the sake of ego. Same as when she still wore her in a nurse's track. No, no, you're wrong. What Helen is doing is responding to a basic flaw in the whole concept. Look, what you have now, Daniel, is a whole undercurrent of suspicion, innuendo. Of course, drugs are a major problem in the world. We all know it, but playing Big Brother, that's not going to give us an answer. All you're doing is encouraging people who are addicted to go find a place to hide. I'm baffled by your simplistic view of human nature. <laughs> this hospital was built on that foundation, wasn't it? You're in a fog, Donald. And what's that supposed to be? Well, I, mean, I can't see you without my glasses. I'm going to close them. Your points were well taken, but I'm afraid we're too far along now. Drug screening will continue. Well, that's fine. Then you can just consider me suspended, Daniel. Because there's no way in this world I'm going to take that test. And I feel terrible because obviously she didn't know anything about what had happened to Jack. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Mm. Mm. Now this is my idea of breakfast. Unless there's caviar in that Danish. Prune. 
How was magic show, Dr. Craig? Well, I just wasn't good enough. Good enough is dancer, not magician. <laughs> Tell her to shut up. Have you asked him yet? Ask me? Ask me what? To help get my husband out of Russia. What do I look like? A freedom fighter? You are important man. Read my lips, sister. Yet. <laughs> Oh. Miss Cajun's trouble appears to be simply a side effect of our anti-arrhythmic therapy. Quinidine certainly can cause upper GI distress. Come in. You wanted to see me? Yes. Put a halt to the drug testing until we can formulate a new policy. This means I'm not suspended? I think so. Oh, thank goodness. Luther, here comes the best part of the job. Go tell Miss Cation the good news. I find it tough to admit I'm wrong. That shows what a big man you are. Especially when I'm right. <laughs> Helen, you embarrassed me before my peers, the board, and I won't forget it. Now, if you excuse me, I have some work to do. <laughs> she had to tell him when to do her. Morning, Jack. Do you mind? Oh, no. We need to talk about what works. We ought to run this by the lab, huh? How are things at home? You're fine. Joanne? Is it okay? Uh, Jack, I've been getting some complaints about your work. Sir? Several of your patients are complaining that you're neglecting them. You're not paying attention to details. You're treating them roughly. That's not like you. Well, I admit, I, I, I've been a little unfocused. Well, a couple of your pals are concerned, too. They're saying you're short-tempered, you're moody. What's going on? I feel a little down. Why? <laughs> Biorhythms? I don't know. Jack, after what happened to you in prison when they forged on an airplane back to Seattle, I thought we had an understanding that you weren't going to come back in until you were ready. Mm -hmm. You also said you were going to get professional help. And I went for a couple of weeks, and I worked my problems through. Now, I know your family's supportive, and Joanne... Well, I never... I hadn't told Joanne. Don't you think it's about time? I can't. Pirelli, the idea of putting in a new sprinkler system was to water the azaleas, not wash the windows. And don't look at me like that. Just do as you're told. What? Sorry to bother you. Uh, you want to come in here to clean? I, I cleaned already this morning. Yeah, well, it, it looks pretty good. Spasiba. May I see it? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry to trouble you about Yuri. Y you are grieving over loss of book. And when something of yours that you care deeply about is taken away, all Yuri wanted was to be best surgeon. Study foreign techniques. They call him dissident. Force him to work on assembly line. Won't let him immigrate. I lose my husband. My country loses good doctor. I know what it's like to have your career. The truth is, please told me yesterday 
There's no chance of me ever seeing my papers again. The whole situation is out of my control. Life never gets better. I should just stop hoping. I will ever see you again. Oh, I'm not going to stop hoping about the book. As long as your husband is alive, well, we'll do our damnedest to free him. And you will help me? Well, I can't promise you a rose garden, especially with Pirelli working the grounds. Right. I'm going to stand here, and if a single drop of H2O sprinkles my shirt, you can kiss your Campari goodbye. That's better. You're thinking about that used Steinway Dr. Harrison already bought it. I understand you spent the night with my daughter. Dr. Westfall, I've, I've been trying to, uh, to find you to talk about this. Once you cut the crap, I'm going to speak to you frankly. My daughter is a wonderful girl. Yeah. I didn't realize who she was. Well, look, she seems to be taken with you. That's so all. I'm not going to say anything like don't see her or anything like that. But if you break her heart, or hurt her in any way, I'll kill you. How are you doing today? Sore. I hurt. It's only natural after major surgery. You. Leave me. I know what you're going through. I had a hysterectomy about three years ago. Quite a sea change. Yeah. Don't rush yourself. I'll try. you to be my wife back in Seattle and you said no I thought you sensed my humiliation my shame and it was okay too because what business did I have asking you to be my wife since you changed your mind I've been <laughs> I've been trying to be strong. (sighs) 
And I wonder... Why? Why? Why I didn't fight back harder. My sense of myself... It's scarred. I got all this violence. I had daydreams. I kill moats. I crush his skull. I take his knife and I stick it so deep in his heart. My hand goes in up to the wrist. I watch him die. Over and over. <laughs> Mark, I think it's wonderful that you changed your mind. Yeah, well, I'll save the brass bands. I'll call our congressman. We'll see just how much clout I have in this burg. I didn't think Masha would ever stop crying. Too much check off. You know, Ellen, the hardest thing will be to get my confidence back. I may be ready physically, but when the crunch comes, will I have the nerve? I'm sure you'll still have all the old magic. I'll see you to Barbara. Listen, how, how about some tricks, hmm? Here, I'll show you one. Here. Here you go. Find it. Here, see? Look at that. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about if I pull something out of the old hat, hmm? <laughs> you ready, Bobby? Abracadabra. Uh, Winnie the Pooh. I love a mic. How did I do that? Ellen! LaPan! LaPan, Ellen! 